Hey everybody, welcome back to American Tackle Live question and answer. We took a little bit of a hiatus over the holidays and we're back now. So I'm joined today by the wonderful Austin Todd. How are you, Mr. Austin? Hey everyone, doing good. So we've got a bunch of stuff that we want to talk about, specifically talking about some, some springtime in shore fishing, but I do have a really cool announcement. Um, we were just notified today, and you guys have probably seen it on our social media, that the SRG, the uh, grip system, that we put out at ICAST uh, has won its second award at FTEX. So they had a digital award, you probably saw them on our social media where it was talking about Angler's Choice where you could go in and you could vote. Um, it was pretty amazing, we got notified this morning, so we won our 12th award, which F is pretty awesome. FTEX being basically almost like the uh, the European ICAST, so. Yeah, so it is a trade show, but the, cool, the one thing I'm actually really excited about is this vote was all about Angler's. Yeah. This was the Angler's Choice. Yeah. Um, so it was cool to see a component company win the general and coarse water category. Like, yeah. I did not expect this yeah. at all. So it's pretty awesome. We're super excited about it. Um, so stay tuned more for some of that stuff coming out. Uh, the next thing I want to talk about is go dogs. Georgia won the national championship. I'm a huge Georgia Bulldogs fan. Huge Georgia Bulldogs did fan. Did they play the game yet? You know, they, they played. Oh, they played. So any TCU fans, game. <laughs> any TCU fans, I will not oh, say anything smokes. bad about it. You came, you played the SEC, you now know. Holy that was fun though. It was a good game yeah. for me. That was miserable. <laughs> that was miserable as a football loving fan. Yep. Um, so, but I hope everybody had a great holidays. Um, one thing as always, guys, if you want to go ahead and put your comments and questions in the chat, we will get to those at the end of the show. I will keep reminding you throughout this entire show because we need your questions. Austin likes answering questions and I like asking them. Throw them at me. So one thing we're going to talk about real quick is we have a show coming up, yep. ICRBE. Um, I got to go for, to it the, my, for my first time last year when mm -hmm. I first came on. Austin, you've gone how many times now? I think this. I think next month's show will be my fifth one, if I'm if I'm not mistaken. So if you're a rod builder and you haven't been to ICRBE, you really do need to go. It is. It's a really cool show because everybody kind of knows each other. You get to meet some people that in my opinion, are kind of titans in the space. Yeah. You, you got people like Mark Krause, uh, Nuno, Tom Kirkman. Mary, Tom Kirkman, who yeah. runs Rodmaker and runs yeah. that show. Um, Austin Todd, a titan in the industry. Uh, but there are some amazing rod yeah. builders. But you also get to see and like touch and feel everything from epoxies to like uh, the rod wrappers, like flex coat stuff. You can see, and you can also buy stuff there. So if you... Yeah. Make the trip to North Carolina. Um, it's at the end of February. Um, you guys can check it. It's just the uh, ICRBE. International Custom Rod Builders Exposition. Yep. That's what it stands for. So and the, largest, you, largest gathering of rod builders that I know of. Um, you know, it's every year in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. I which is a beautiful year, city. Oh, yeah. It's a really cool city. It, and it, it, you can stay in the hotels, which are right on the convention center. Linked to the convention center. And, like, we walked everywhere last year. Yeah. We had really good food. You know, um, we went to... You don't have to walk much more than, you know, 10 blocks. And there's no. all kinds of great restaurants and, you know, and cool places to cool stay. And cool general out. store. A general yeah, store was cool. general store. And, and then, like, like Kevin said, the cool thing is, is um, almost everyone knows each other because it's a very close-knit kind of intimate show. It's not like, you know, like iCast or some of the big consumer shows. It's, um, you know, everyone kind of has a, a, a knowledge of each other. You run into each other everywhere. So it's a good time. You know, we usually, we're in a big group with pro staffers and customers and uh, we definitely enjoy it. Looking forward to it. The amount of hugs yeah. that happen <laughs> at the hugs. very beginning of the show, it's just like, hey, big hug. Yeah. But it's a really cool show. You guys should definitely go check that out. But there's a couple of really cool things coming to that show. Uh, one is going to be the new Learning Center. Um, we'll have more information on the Learning Center itself, which is going to be a really cool place for you to actually go and put your hands on blanks and, and rods and learn techniques, which are going to be really cool. Um, the other thing, we're going to have new products at the, at the show. So a lot of the new products we're having are going to be the stuff that we showed at iCast, mm -hmm. and then also our new fall catalog stuff that came out. If you haven't seen those new products, head over to the website, americantackle.us. There is a uh, big banner that says fall catalog. Click on that, you'll see some of the new products there. Also, one big thing that happens at that show is the International Rod Building Challenge. Yep. Mm -hmm. Normally what we do up there is we take the rods up, they're showcased, and then through a multitude of different people judging different things, I think last time we had like 20 or 30 people that we were selecting mm -hmm. to help us get us down to the top yeah, 10. Yeah, help pick the top 10. This year we're doing it slightly differently. We are gonna have live judging with a very select group of judges who are some of the biggest names in rod building. And it is not just 
American tackle personnel. I don't think there's anybody from AT that's a part of that. No, I don't think so. So it's one of those things that we want to make sure that these are rod builders. These guys are going to be looking at everything, but they're going to pick the top 10. And then those top 10 rods are going to come back here. And then we're going to have another round of judging from just the yeah. top 10, like we did normally like last year. Yeah. But it's, it's amazing. It's the biggest one we've ever had. Yeah. There's, I think it's 14, 14 or 15 countries. That sounds about right. And I mean, we've already got one of the rods in and it's, yeah. it's gorgeous. Yeah, it so great. it's, we won't give away too much, but that is all about ICRB. We are going to talk more about the judging uh, next time. Mr. Don Morris is on the show, who is kind of the, he runs that event for the competition itself. He's the one that everybody contacts and everything. So he'll have a lot more in-depth information as we get closer to the show and the event. So let's get into some fun stuff. Okay. It's Florida. It's starting to warm up. It never really got cold. I mean, we still got, we, we have some cold ahead of us. We always get those cold snap, cold for us, you know. 65 I know, degrees, I, I gotta put you, on like yeah. a glove. Yeah, so it, it, we get some some cool snaps still for the next couple months, um, but it, it really just kind of depends on you know what the what the year has planned for the weather. It's it's always a, a crapshoot. So. I, I I remember one time I think it was I think it was last year where we had like one week where it dipped below forty, yeah. and it was like oh this is the greatest thing ever, and then the next week it was seventy five. Yeah, that sounds so, all right. But cold Christmas. Cold Christmas, that's true. We did have a cold Christmas. Yeah, I think uh, which it was about 26 by my house for a low. But, you know, that's cold for Central cold Florida. cold for Central that's Florida. Cold. But let's talk about Florida fishing. Yeah. So you're you're a big inshore guy. Mm -hmm. So it's coming up to springtime. And I don't do a ton of inshore fishing. Um, but you do. So tell me a little bit, like, what is what is basically Florida inshore look like in the spring? Yeah, so uh, like right now we're kind of in, we're still in that winter pattern. Uh, a lot of the fish like to go kind of back into the backwaters, into the, um, uh, into like the uh, mangroves and that kind of thing uh, before it starts to warm up and they start moving towards, like I'm thinking of like some of the snook and redfish and that, those kind of fish that like to move out to the beach. So like here in uh, central Florida, so I'm, I'm fishing out on the Space Coast, the Indian River, the Mosquito Lagoon. Right now, it's more the uh, the time that I like to do a lot of push pulling sight fishing, uh, because this is the time of year where uh, when the water gets nice and cool like that, it likes to um, uh, it it clears up a little bit, and on top of that, you get really good conditions this time of year. I mean, like I, I don't think I've seen a cloud in about four days here. Like it's been absolutely gorgeous, bluebird skies. I'm so and sorry for everybody you, up north. <laughs> I apologize. So sorry. Don't want to rub it in. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but that's that's really good for sight fishing. You don't want uh, clouds over your head when you're trying to see the fish. So we're in that time of year. Uh, around that mid late March, it starts to kind of transition more into the springtime. Water warms up a little bit. The temperatures are a little bit warmer as well. Um, and then that's when you start to see. Uh, I I would say in the next month or two, like here, you see the uh, the sea trout really the fishing for them really picks up, especially the big breeder fish. Um, you know, uh, the, the redfish, uh, the snook, especially the snook and tarpon, they start to pick up a little bit further along once you start to get into maybe that April, May, June area because um, they like the little bit warmer water. Uh, so it really just kind of depends there. Uh, but yeah, so we're getting into that springtime fishing uh, where uh, it starts to kind of revert back to normal because winter fishing is a little bit different than, yeah. you know, than your spring, summer. And even fall fishing. So. And it's also, it, it's it's spring Florida fishing. Yeah. Like, this is when everything, like, I think everywhere in the country, it starts to really ramp up around yeah. this time frame. So, if we're going, you know, we were talking about, there's the trout that are out there. We've got the snook, tarp, and that sort of stuff. Right now is probably the best time for guys to start building for those kind of situations. Yeah. So, it yeah, gives you a little right. bit of lead time. So, let's talk about what every person should be asking the question of, especially if you're building a rod, is... What are you gonna throw? What is what is kind of the focus? Are we doing, you know, are we throwing little swim baits? So what what would you be kind of throwing right around now? Yeah, so I mean, like uh, again, like right now, like in this time, I'm gonna be throwing uh, like rattling shrimp and other kind of smaller uh, soft plastic baits to to sight cast at fish, or when you know that fish are in the area, you're blind casting into that area. Uh, but as you get into the spring, you'll still throw that kind of thing. Maybe the, the profile of the bait gets a little bit bigger. Uh, but I start to, you know, late March, early April is when I start to throw more topwater. 
Uh, okay, I, to that. I got a question for you because yeah. this this is always something that I, I love throwing a top water yeah. because it's just cool to see fish blow up on the top of the water. But what's the actual purpose of top water? Why why are you throwing a top water in that time frame? So for me, uh, it, it comes down to a few different things. Uh, one is it's a really good locator for fish. Uh, if you're in an area where you can't see as well, uh, it's a really good way of you can cover so much ground with it. You just bomb it because they're heavy and I'm using 10, 15 pound braided lines. So you, you cast it so far, sometimes you can't see where it lands. And then you, you work it back and uh, you're covering so much ground. You can fan cast in these different areas and you, you can kind of locate that fish when you start getting those hits. You yep. figure out, okay, maybe the, the, the bottom is a little bit different there. There's some kind of structure, whatever it is. And so it's great for covering ground and locating fish. Um, it also happens to be uh, the pretty much it, I think it's just something about big trout especially where I like to fish the East Coast Space Coast of Florida that probably 90% of the trout that I've caught that are over maybe the 21 22 inch mark maybe in that three to four it's always on top water they love top water uh, and that's one of my favorite fish to catch and there's just something about it I don't uh, I still I honestly don't know if I figured it out yet I don't know if it's where I'm fishing at what they prefer about it, but um, they just love seem to love top water, and so that's another aspect of it that I love. So we were t we were talking about because we will always have like conversations before the show of kind of what we want to talk about. Yeah. Um, and I mentioned the whopper plopper, yeah. and you immediately went, <laughs> "No, you yeah, don't. I mean, you're like, not throwing this." So what? Yeah, so I mean, what are you, you throwing can, for these kind of baits? You can throw a whopper plopper. You'd have to change the hooks. Uh, and fish will definitely it's hit it. It's such a but fun it's, bait. It's, it is. It's a But it is more of a freshwater bait yeah. you would have to change out the the hardware on it uh but typically i throw a lot of walk the dog style top waters maybe not so much the um uh because the other type is like your typical like your popper kind of and i don't throw as much of those uh, i mean i've had success on them but yeah. for me i like the walk the dog style that's just you know so uh, it's more personal preference so more than anything skitter walk yeah so there's the, there's all kinds of different brands you know you've got the 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 rapalas like the skitter walks and then you've got the uh, the uh, the head and like the the, the Zara Spook Zara Spook Junior, uh, uh, Mirror Lure has quite a few like the uh, the the she dog and the the he dog the top dog they make great top waters. It's a lot of dogs. Yeah, a lot of dogs. They love dogs. <laughs> so a lot of walking uh, dogs and dogs. It's just it, I, so, I love when I love when fishermen come up with names for stuff. Yeah. Because it just like whoever thought of that we're gonna call it the Whopper Plopper. Yeah. But I think it, it's hilarious. It makes sense. But so. Yeah. If we're building for a skitter walk or a spook or, or, or these topwater baits, mm -hmm. now is the time to start building for that sort of stuff because then you can go yeah. fish it in March. Yeah, when, when it's going to start to pop up here in a few months. So when it comes to topwater, I do know this. I'm, I'm still learning on a lot of stuff, but the blank is the biggest because sometimes when you're fishing different things, like the guides really matter yeah. or the grips really matter. Real seat. Yeah, there, there are some big points in specific fishing yeah. scenarios, but topwater, the blank is yeah, that'd be the, the number main component, one. The main component to fit, uh, to uh, not fixate on, but focus on. So, so what's so if you're if you're doing stuff like that, and we're gonna do just a, a random build for you, mm -hmm. um, say we're throwing a skitter walk. It's March. You're kind of doing that topwater bait. What are gonna be maybe two or three blanks that you're gonna look at for something like that? So typically, you're you're gonna want to go with. Um, yeah, I like to go with graphite. Uh, carbon blanks so typically like a like a Bushido blank um, uh, although I do throw some matrix as well uh, typically you want something that's not too fast because it like other moving baits like uh, um, you know like chatter baits and, and, and square bills or crank baits all that kind of thing uh, it is a moving bait you don't really want to rip it out of their mouth if that if that blank is it shuts off too early and so you do like to be able to uh, not that I set the hook very hard with a top water. I like to wait till I feel them. Yep. You know, feel them. You see, you, that's one of the things is you, you watch them hit it and you have to, you know, sit there shaking, waiting to feel it. You know, try to keep it, keep the line Please tight. stay there. Please stay there. Please exactly. stay there. Ah! And so, you know, and I just kind of set into it. But you, you want it to be something, uh, it, it doesn't have to be a moderate, but just something not super fast. And so uh, a few of the ones that I like to use... Uh, uh, like the our light saltwater blank, uh, the LS7 8 to 15 is a great blank. It, that's a, um, uh, I would probably classify it as a 
a mod fast. You know, it, it's not quite as fast as our spin jig and our mag bass line. So yep. that's a great option. Uh, it's a seven foot blank. It's available in a seven and a half foot blank, which is great too. Um, you know, uh, if you're doing a lot of walk the dog, I, I typically don't want a seven and a half, seven foot, eight blank just because it's a lot of this and it's just extra weight and extra yeah. blank that you have to cover, you know, when I'm sitting there walking the dog. Uh, so typically I'll do like a seven, seven, two, seven, three. Uh, but that's a good blank for it. Uh, I do have one spin jig blank, the, the SJ726-12 that I throw for topwater. But it's a lighter blank. It's a blank. really light blank. It's a, it's a lighter blank. And so it's fast, but at the same time, it doesn't have all that power where I'm just going to rip it out of its mouth. Gotcha. And so that's, that's the thing that I like about that one. Uh, and plus it's a light blank, but it's still fast and loads up really well when I'm casting those topwaters. A mile and a half, mile. yeah. So that's a, that's a good one. I also, uh, you know, one of our matrix blanks, I fished the, uh, the matrix spin jig seven to eight, or I'm sorry, seven foot eight to 14 as well. Again, it's not a super heavy blank, even though it's faster. So it's, it's going to be a little bit more, uh, where I can kind of set into that fish. So, and th this is, I think this is one of the cool things. And I say this almost every time we start talking about stuff like this is rod building is one of those things that even though you're making recommendations on stuff, yeah. you guys can go build whatever you want to. Yeah. And there's different things. I know our, our LS series, our light salt water, kind of was specifically made for kind of that inshore kind mm -hmm. of setup. But yeah. we have guys using LSs for flipping. My, my flipping six in LS. I mean, I... Uh, and even spin jigs. Uh, I use the LS 7, 10 to 20. That's my, my all-around seven-foot medium-heavy bait casting, you know, bass rod. Yeah. Uh, so they're so uh, my my snook rod is a mag bass seven foot eight twelve to twenty. So it's uh, it, just because it's labeled as a mag bass or a light saw water doesn't mean that that's the application that you have to use it for. Well, it's just it's it's to describe to you, you know, like when it says it's a crankbait blank, automatically in your head you're thinking, okay, it's going to be a little bit lighter and it's going to be a moderate blank. So and that's other things. If if you guys have our catalog or if you don't have our catalog, one you can call us or send us an email, we'll send you a catalog pretty much instantly. Um, but also you can go on our website, you can look up stuff there, but the biggest considerations that you wanna look at is maybe not so much the name of it, but the action, mm -hmm. that length, power, those type of things to be able to build off of. So there, all of that stuff is listed, we don't hide behind anything, all the dimensions are listed. And I, the one thing I do like about our catalog is it's a working catalog, it right? It, it has ODs, IDs, it has you know, actions, it has uh, power ratings, it has lengths, and and if you guys have questions about that, absolutely call us. I mean, the whole point of why we're here is you guys can call us. Yeah. Austin does this every day. M uh, Captain Mo, uh, John Graves, who's a new addition to our uh, our pro staff side, yeah. uh, Don Morris, Alex Funky, like you can literally call us. Yeah. And that's, get a that's what we do. answer um, through all of these different things if you have questions. I, like in my my email signature and on my on my business cards, it it says like sales rep, you know, account managers, but also tech support because that's what we do. Uh, we don't just sell the parts. We know the parts. We fish them. We use them. We build them. So we're we're familiar with them. We can we're happy to spread whatever knowledge we can. Yeah, that's so. One of the biggest things I, I tell people all the time, and I get messages on Instagram, because I'm usually the person you're talking to on the Instagram or Facebook or anything like that, which is usually like, hey, send an email. If you have a really crazy in-depth question that I can't answer, normally what ends up happening is I like poke my head up and I go, hey, Austin, I have a question for you. And he answers that question for me. So, Or I say I need more info. Or you need more info, which is always the answer to my question, which is you need more info. I was like, well, then you should go answer him. So what is a good email if they want to reach out to you? Uh, uh, Austin at American Tackle US. Super complicated. Yeah, very, very complicated. so crazy. We'll spell it out on the screen. <laughs> we'll put it. We'll put it in the chat. There we go. Uh, let's see here. Just going through my list. All right, so we've talked about blanks. We've kind of dug into those a little bit. Um, let's talk guide trains. Uh, guide trains are one of those things. That, again, it comes down to preference. You mm -hmm. know, we have. I've got a couple out here because I grabbed them. So we've got our tie forged black titanium, which I will always recommend this. And this is something I've learned and actually seen from people when we get tech calls or, or Instagram message and they're saying, well, my guides are rusting. Well, it's because you're using a stainless steel guide in salt water and you're not keeping up with the maintenance. Yeah, on you're, you're not maintaining them because you, you shouldn't have any issues with, uh, with any of our stainless steel guides 
rusting unless you are just literally Dunking, dragging yeah. them. Yeah, dragging them out from the the fishing spot and then just leaving them sitting outside your door and and doing that for a month. You're not gonna. They're three sixteen stainless steel, so you shouldn't have any issues. Uh, titanium's gonna uh, just add on to that even more so where yeah. they're going to be even more uh, resistant to any kind of corrosion. And it's also so, lighter. If yeah. you're out throwing those topwaters and you're working that rod the whole day, yeah. it is a legitimate weight saving. When you talk about the entire train for a seven foot rod, it does make a difference. So yeah. we always recommend go the titanium route. It's it's just worth it. It'll save you a bunch of, of different headaches or anything down the road. Actually, um, uh, you saying that uh, the uh, throwing the top water all day, that reminds me of one other thing I was going to uh, just kind of touch on real quick. Yeah. Uh, typically, I don't throw a top water all day. Typically, it's a morning type deal. Uh, I'll throw it a little bit longer if it's cloudy. Uh, it seems that the fish, uh, they, they'll be more keen to eat it uh, later on in the day if it's more cloudy. And then I'll also, I'll throw it for the last probably hour and a half of daylight. You know, like if I go out for like a dusk trip, yep. you know, to fish, you know, an hour past dark kind of thing. Uh, so it's not an all, all day type deal. Um, you know, typically it is a morning and afternoon or evening, I should say. Type and then you probably throw a rattling shrimp. Yeah. Yeah. Throw a rattling shrimp. I will uh, say that yeah. is the most popular thing. Yeah. The, 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 cause we have our anglers products uh, website that you can go on there and order some of our angler product stuff in our rattling shrimp around there. And I always find it hilarious when I go back to the back and there's just a, people are like dumping in rattling shrimp into somebody's box cause they ordered like a hundred of them. Yeah. It, yeah it's, if you haven't uh, seen a rattling shrimp, you have to grab one. They're awesome. Yeah. It's great. Great bait. Uh, I mean, especially for, for out here where I fish, it was pretty much designed for out here where I fish, but it does well on on both coasts as well, all, uh, all the way up through the Carolinas. They're really, really popular we had in the big Carolinas. Order. We had a big order going out to Texas for those. Yeah, yeah, Texas as well. It, it's uh, putting them in Louisiana, putting them on popping corks. Yep. Yeah. So. So, talking guide trains yeah. now. <laughs> yep. So we have our tie forge, and we also have our microwaves. So I have the 25s out here, but a 25 or a 20, kind of in yeah, that range. Depending on the blank, uh, most of the rods that I build, I build with microwave 20s. I, you mentioned titanium. Yep. I like the uh, the uh, tidal wave titanium tie ion uh, set. That's yeah. what I typically put on all of my personal rods because of how light they are and as well as the, the extra added corrosion yep. resistance, which is really nice. Uh, so I throw those a lot. Uh, and that's a great option because microwaves are pretty much on every rod I build. But like you mentioned, um, if microwaves aren't really your thing, which I know some people it's not, you want a more traditional guide, uh, either the stainless or the titanium uh, tie forged are another great option for doing the, the very same thing. Yeah, and, and, and we talk about microwaves light because it is our go-to yeah. guide because it is something we're really, really proud of. Something we believe in. We've done a ton of awards. It's the and reason it's, why I have a job here. And it's really funny because I have people that ask me all the time, like, do you build anything else? No. No. Pretty much everything that I have have microwaves, and it's not because there's a mandate within the building that says you have to build with this. It is literally because as soon as you throw it, you don't want to throw anything else. Now, if you're more of a traditional thing, we won't hold that against you, but you can use our Tie Forge. The Tie Forge are very, very good guide system. They're more of a traditional look to them. You can get them in a double foot. You can get them in a single foot. You can get them in different colors, different sizes. We have everything. I think we have everything up to like a forty. Uh, in the in the double foot, it's actually it goes up to a, a fifty low. Fifty low, <clears> that's right. Me. So you can get whatever you need for the type of fishing you're doing. Um, this next component, I thought had so much more to do with it, and I'm going to ask the same questions I asked Austin earlier about grips, because for me, I'm a big carbon guy. I love the look of it. I like that it's light. I like the feeling of it. Everything. So I grabbed a couple from our rack out there. So this is. Our carbon here, if you hold that, I'm gonna move these out of the way. Sure. So we were talking about grips, you know, how important are grips? What, what, you know, do I wanna use EVA? Do I wanna use cork? Do I wanna use carbon? And your answer was, it doesn't matter. Yeah, uh, I mean, it, it matters more for preference. Uh, each one is gonna have their, di I'll give this back yep. to you. Each one's gonna have their, uh, their different uh, features that you might like. Um, you know, the, the carbon grips are very light. The EVA and cork are very light as well. And they're so damn sexy. That is the one. That they is are the one so added. sexy. I'm, so, I'm so. sorry this is not a kid-friendly kid channel, but you guys can see there's the 20s on there. Yep. 
So this actually we grabbed, uh, grabbed off of our dominant wall. If you haven't been in the store yet, we have an entire wall of all of these different builds, we call our dominant series, um, that we take to all the shows. So you can see all the different combinations Show and everything else. Well, showcasing what we can do for OEM private label yep. rods uh, and that kind of thing. But, uh, you know, handles, it, it really doesn't come down to as far as like one is better than the other. One thing I would say is just you need to make sure it's comfortable because again, you know, uh, trying to do the, well, I can do it here. Yeah. Doing this motion for hours, I mean, it can, it can wear on your wrist and, and your hands and so having an arrow seat is really nice. You know, having that, that palm swell, some people like the apex seat. Uh, you want to find something that's comfortable because it is a lot of movement. You're not just sitting there holding it. It is just constant constant movement uh so find something comfortable and i was very wrong because i was like well why would you know do you want cork because i think in salt water salt water is going to ruin cork and then i started thinking about it and austin's like no it's not going to ruin cork it's going to be just fine and then it's like yeah. well what about eva is it gonna, nope not going to deteriorate the eva so it, it literally comes down to personal preference yeah. this one's kind of cool because this has a little bit of the cork in the bottom and the eva you can mix and match this stuff to get different combinations the, uh, the we've got different would, shapes. Yeah, exactly. And the one thing I would say, um, you know, uh, just over time, as anyone who's ever built a rod or owned a fishing rod has seen, you know, cork and EVA, they are going to be a little bit, they're going to wear a little bit. Carbon isn't going to wear as much, so that's, that's one option. Uh, but it is a little bit more expensive, typically, too. So, uh, again, it, it comes it's down to personal more problem. sexy. It looks great. <laughs> so. I'm going to get you to say it, I promise. Not really. We'll, we'll see. <laughs> so, um, I think that kind of covers a lot of the inshore fishing. Yeah. Um, one thing, if you guys do know, if you guys have any questions about inshore fishing in Florida and you are coming to Florida, give us a call. Between Austin and Captain Mo, they will put you in the place to get you catching fish. Um, and this is the other nice thing. It's not just about rod building. We have people that call in all the time that go, hey, I'm coming to Florida. I want to do some inshore fishing. Well, I mean, I, I spent, uh, you know, probably 20 minutes on the phone last week uh, talking with a customer about, one of my customers about, um, they're going to be in town and they wanted to do uh, some peacock fishing, excuse me, peacock bass oh, and so like exotic, uh, exotic fishing down in Southeast Florida. And you know, so I walked them through some of the different ways that they could they could do that kind of fishing, and hopefully they're actually doing that. Excuse me, right now. So, I just have to find somebody to take me ice fishing. Why would you want to do that? Cause it looks really cool, and I don't mean just the temperature. It just it like it's I I, I, I want to go be cold. I've been deep diving into all of like these different styles of fishing. Like I, I'm hooked a little bit on like inshore fly fishing right now. I just built an inch uh, an inshore fly fishing rod. That I understand. I like, but it's it's so funny because you could like we uh we've got people on here. By the way, if you're not asking questions, make sure you're asking your questions. We're gonna go through those here shortly. Or so if, we'll beat you up. We won't we won't beat you up. No, because I I went on a ski trip yeah. this weekend and <laughs> he's not hitting any. I'm not hitting anything. He's not in no, any shape to no. beat anyone up. I, I ended up cracking two ribs, so took a little spill. Yeah, Kevin and Ice. I, I shouldn't go ice fishing. This is basically. I shouldn't go ice fishing. <laughs> this is basically like Kevin's like Michael Jordan sick game because Kevin's not oh, feeling man. well right no, now. Oh man, no. But we we do this for you. Yeah. So if you don't ask questions, you're causing me pain for no reason. Ask your questions. Don't cause him pain for no reason. No. Cause him pain for a reason. Yes, of course. So, so I think with that we're gonna get into. If you guys, by the way, the the YouTube channel is exploding. Yeah. Um, this is rod building is probably one of our best performing series that we've ever done. Um, it's a really cool series. If you are a rod builder, I, I don't care if you're a beginner rod builder or an expert rod builder, because we watch a lot of these guys watch these episodes for the first time when they show up, and you'll hear it from like across the sales for huh. like, that's a really good idea. I'm gonna use that now because rod building is one of these crafts that you can always be learning. So we designed that series to kind of give you different things that you can go into. It's not overly specific, yeah. but at the same time, it, it can be very specific. Uh, and this next episode is actually gonna be all about guides. So it's a pretty cool episode, um, but if you guys wanna check it, take a look at that teaser, we're gonna do that now.
So that is the teaser for the next episode of This Is Rod Building. And it kind of reminded me of stuff because we saw the guides and we saw them pulling different things out. Why? And I, I got to go back to this because this is one of the, I love these shows because it's also me asking them questions and they can't run away from me or they can't answer a phone. So I get them for these questions. Why are you throw? Why do we throw top water? Like why, you know, why throw different top waters for different situations? Sorry. Yeah, I mean, uh, it, it, like I said, it, it is a it's a way to locate the fish. It's a really cool way to catch fish. I didn't say that earlier. It is. It's a really cool. Way Watching to catch a snook fish. just boom yeah. is. Mm. Yeah, it's uh, it's something to see, and um, and so that's that's one thing. Typically, what I like to do is it depends on the conditions too. Like I mentioned, cloud cover comes into it. Uh, the the wind and what you're fishing around comes in to it as well. Like uh, during that time, uh, in March and April, that's when like in our river you'll see uh, pods of bait kind of showing back mm-hmm. up. And so uh, what happens is that bait gets all schooled up, and like trout or redfish will or even snook will hang out around them. And so working that top water through that that bait, you know, is something, uh, it, it definitely gets their attention. You get that reaction strike. And so it depends on, you know, the, which way the wind is blowing. Cause you could go back the very next day to the very same spot and the wind changed and the bait's not there anymore. So it, it comes down to that as well. And then, uh, the level of the wind, because like I mentioned several different top waters of different sizes, uh, I like to throw different top waters. Like I throw Zara spook junior when it's glass calm. You know, uh, Gary, when he was in town, and uh, the, the guy, Philip that was filming with us, when we took them fishing, I had him, we went out, and it was a really calm morning. I guess this was, this was probably about maybe three weeks, a month ago, whatever it was. And he... Yeah, early early December, mid-December. No, it was, it was early December. It was like between December 1st and the 11th. Gotcha. Because that's when they were here. That's the only reason I know this. Okay. Yeah, so I mean, uh, so it, having him, it was super calm. Having him throw one of those Zara Spook Juniors, it, it's, uh, it's not quite as intimidating to the fish. It's a smaller profile. Uh, it's not as loud. And then if there seems to be more of a ripple on the water, that's when I go up to m- maybe more like a... Uh, like a, a skitter walk that's not quite as big. It's a little bit louder. Uh, it's a little bit bigger, but it's also not quite as big and loud as like some of the mirror lures, which is what I go to when you're in, you know, waves that are this big and you're just like, I need to make sure that these fish know this is here. And that's when you throw something loud, like a she dog or he dog or top dog or whatever it yep. is. So, uh, you know, just different profiles, different sizes for. Uh, different times and, and different weather patterns. Nice. So, yeah. I'll give you anything else on top water before we get into questions. Uh, anything you're I thinking mean, I, about? I think we, we hit it pretty good for, for what's coming up for the spring. So I'm excited for spring because this is yeah. like the first springtime that I'm actually like really focusing on trying to catch as many fish as humanly possible. <laughs> so I'm all excited. I got stuff built at home, like buying stuff off of off of different websites for tackle. Funky's telling me to buy this. You're like, buy these, buy that. So my wife hates me. Um, So we're gonna get into some questions now. Pull this on over here. All right. I love how you can see yourself like seven seconds after the fact. I was was laughing at, I think, I I think I saw it was Wes Christie said something about roller guys. Yeah, we'll get there. Josh Allen, good afternoon. Josh is the man. Steve Greathouse, hello, sir. Don, did everyone share this? I love it. Uh, Brad Hetzel, yo, men. Wait, did I miss something? Hey, Brad. Bye, Brad. Bye, Brad. <laughs> <laughs> He'll get a kick out of that. <laughs> uh, let's see. Brad Hetzel, love the LS bikes. Yeah. Steve Greathouse, build a couple of LSs on the recommendation of Mo. I'll be using them more. Uh, best thing about building your own rod is you can do it your way. Crow, crow. <laughs> Doug Shaw, have it your way. I love it. They build, they fish, and they walk the walk. They fish the fish. Nice. Uh, let's see here. Man, you guys got to ask more questions. It's a lot of highs. We'll, we'll take the highs too, though. Oh, by the way, we have to, from now on, Mike Hardiman will be now known as Taco. That's understandable. Sorry, we, we got to, we're, we're, we're... There's an in-house bet. There is an in-house bet, and I... And a, uh... A taco is at stake, but not just so, any type. Any taco. A cartoon. A smiley. cartoon smiley mustachey taco. Yeah. So. Which is going to be adhered to someone's body, and I am so excited for it. 
Um, Brad Hetzel last trying to get. Yep, last guy turning over to buy a bulletproof. Uh, let's see, Corey, Corey from Saskatchewan. Yeah. Oh God, is it like negative thirty? Well, you it's have to be you cold. have to remember that they they do Celsius, and I think Celsius is also measured in kilometers. So, all right, maybe not. <laughs> I'm an American. I don't know. We use freedom <laughs> units. Um, I had to say that. Uh, Doug, the rattling shrimp are dynamite. Yes, they are. These flanders on the west shores love them. Uh, Steve Greenhouse, I want to try using rattling shrimp in Missouri. I think. I'm pretty sure. Uh, yeah, yeah, Don immediately because Don has told me this story where he caught he got bass on rattling shrimp. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, uh, I I don't know if Randy Kruger's on there. Randy Kruger up in uh, uh, Michigan, he's caught smallmouth on him. Uh, I've got guys. Uh, I've got an angler pro staffer up in like the the I want to say maybe the New Jersey area, and he uses them as a um, I think it's almost like a teaser rig for fluke for flounder. And he catches oh, the crap perfect. out of the flounder on him. So it, it, it's not just a, a sight fishing bait. They're, you can use it for a lot of things. Corey Lyman, nope, only negative nine. Is that negative nine Celsius? Because that would be that'd be really, really well. No, negative nine Celsius. I think is uh, not quite zero Fahrenheit. If I remember so correctly. So, but zero is thirty two. Because I'm pretty sure zero degrees Celsius yeah, is 32 right. degrees Fahrenheit. We'll have Corey. We'll have Corey. Corey, now. send us a measuring. Hook us up. Send us something. Uh, Don with the thumbs up. Don's a cold. All the captions say tie for. Oh, oh yeah. I guess we're trying. Uh, captions are running. So sorry. Um, John, get to 10,000 followers on autism anglers, and I'll jerk Don's beer again like a church bell. I don't even know where that came from, but... You didn't see that video? No! Yeah, he just comes up, he's like, hey, Don. Don's like, hey, and he goes, and just yanks on his beard. And Don's like, you can see on his oh, face, it wasn't scripted. <laughs> that's great. Yeah. Uh, it matters the type of fishing you're doing. Um, it's not that bad. Come up here, be honestly, say about ice fishing. True. Um, you don't need to go anywhere near snow for a while. It's not even the snow. I did fine on snow. It was when I hit ice. That's true. So that was that was the thing. Ice fishing. That's a drinking man's game there. <laughs> Ask Austin where the best place to get chicken wings are. Uh, that would be Maryland Fried Chicken on Highway 50. There you go. Yeah. I've ice fished twice up in Utah. Absolutely tore the crappie up and tiger perch on those trips. So much fun. Actually, uh, I think I was watching a video where I saw... Um, uh, Jim Crowley was doing some ice fishing. I'm sure. Yeah, he was. I, he was getting. If you guys up. don't follow Jim Crowley and Jim he's, Crowley Outdoors, you need to. Crazy son of a gun. He will build. He will show you how to build baits. He shows you how to build rods. He shows you how different ways of fishing stuff. He travels the country. Awesome human being. Check him out. Wes Christie, roller guides, roller guides. I'm. I'm wondering if you're a wise man, Wes. Wes Christie. I'll see Mike, you next month. I'm actually. I'm really upset. I don't. I'm not going. I'm not going to be at ICRB this year. And I'm super sad about it because I've made a ton of friends at that event. We're having another event that I have to go to, which we'll announce here shortly. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm upset, Wes, because I don't get to see you. Uh, microwave 25s, surf casting microwave. So we have a surf casting microwave. It's called a microwave 50. Yeah, I mean, uh, the microwave 25 would be... Um, uh, yeah, I mean, you could use the third, Patrick's saying the 30 as well. You could use yep. that. Uh, depends on the size blank. Uh, if you're doing casting surf casting or conventional surf casting, you could use the microwave 18.8 double foot. Uh, the microwave 25, you, you probably wouldn't want to use for surf fishing. It would be more for your, your typical six foot to seven and a half foot, uh, you know, your medium, medium heavy type rods. So here's a, here's a curveball for you. What microwave do you use when you use the Super Launcher 5000 that I have seen people do. What? It's a potato gun. Have you seen these? No. Oh my gosh. Somebody has got to have seen this. It's a potato gun where they freeze squid in a tube size. It's the same size as that. Oh, for, and they load it chum? in there. No. They hook a. They, they literally have a hook and everything that goes through it, and they tie it to the hook. They slide it in basically a potato gun, and then it's in an air compressor, and you hear them just go, chunk, and it literally throws the thing 500 yards. Without even trying. So microwave would be five fifty. Microwave five fifty. 
It's definitely but possible. It, we can I, add on to those numbers. If anybody hasn't seen this video, if you if you look up potato gun surf fishing, I guarantee it'll show you. But it, it literally is a potato gun. They freeze squid in tubes that match the PVC pipe, and you just hear boom, and it just it's awesome. If you, I'll I'll show you when we get off this, it's awesome. Um, Steve Greyhouse. Austin, what type of baits do you prefer for say bass? I'm on a mission to paint all of the a to paint all the AT staff, the best staff out there, by the way, each a couple of custom baits. Your turn came up. So, what baits are you throwing for bass? You don't really fish a lot of bass. Well, I mean, like top waters that you can throw for bass, and this is a lot of stuff that I've learned uh, from fishing with Alex, Alex Funky. Um, you know, uh, like devil's horses are one that you can throw. Uh, some of the, uh, I think like some of the Sammies, like the Lucky Crafts, those are really popular ones. They're a little bit more expensive, but that's a really good bait. Uh, obviously, the Whopper Plopper that he mentioned, that's a great... Uh, I just love the name of that. <laughs> it is. It is such a fun bait Have to you throw. caught a fish on it? I've it caught is, a couple of baits. It is so much fun. It's, it's, it's funny because you don't have to do just it. Re just reel. You just reel, and as long as you keep it constant, it's like... And then it gets yeah. smoked. Yeah. Best feeling ever. Um... I asked Austin's. I asked Austin a question from Brad Hetzel. Well, oh, I don't know. What, did I miss I it, Austin? I don't know if I saw it, um, but I'm I'm struggling from uh, from seeing it a little bit further away. Yeah. Go back here. I don't see the question. Um, I may have missed it because there's a lot of comments in here. So. Yeah, there are a lot of comments. Uh, so there's one. Last, Last guy train. train. You have to buy bulletproof. Nope, that's okay. not a question. Yeah. So. Ah, I must have missed it. Um, Brad, ask it again real quick. Uh, type it in again real quick, please. Oh, it looks like Steve Greathouse is asking, like, uh, Zara Spooks. Uh, I've thrown them a little bit for bass. I've caught some on uh, top water. Uh, I haven't thrown them as much. Uh, I, for me, it's just more I just kind of switch it up because, like, if I'm fishing top water for bass here in Florida, so much, so many of the times, or so much of the time, I should say, uh, I'm typically fishing uh, a lot of heavy cover, a lot of hydrilla uh, or lily pads and that kind of thing, and you're getting hung up. So you throw like a lot of frogs, you throw a lot of like weedless yep. uh, top waters. So you're not throwing as many like hard baits. Um, I, I do know like Alex likes to like offshore. Uh, you know, further out where there isn't stuff to get hung up on, he'll throw like an actual hard bait top water, whether yeah. it's a Sammy or something like that. Um, so there's that. But yeah, so like me, a lot of the times I'm fishing pretty shallow uh, and I'm fishing around a lot of cover. So I don't throw like Zara Spooks and that kind of thing for, uh, for bass as much. So, Corey, I don't have any questions on the topic because fishing is a lot different here. You're not wrong. <laughs> Uh, Randy, hey, what's up? Don't worry, you're, you're, you're not late. You can also go back and watch these because they stay live. Yep. Uh, Jared Campbell, I'm familiar with building I I swim bait. I don't, I don't think I'm, I don't think I know his name. Yeah. Jared, I, not trying to point you out because we do get a lot of our familiar faces back here because there's yep. a lot of our customers. Um, if you've bought from us or you set up an account, please let us know or send me a message or something like that. If you haven't, you can send Austin an email. Austin, what's your email? Austin at americantackle.us. Very. Very hard to remember. So if you have any questions, you can send it to him, but we're gonna ask you your question. I'm gonna sneeze and this is gonna hurt so bad. I'm really trying to will this sneeze to go away. So bad right now. Okay, it went away. I'm familiar with building swim bait and inshore rods, but I'm building my first fly rod. What do I need to change about my technique? Anything special about fly rods? I don't think so. You're When you get to the tip of a fly rod, it is going to get a lot more flexible. So yeah. having your supports a little bit closer to where you're working is very, very beneficial. Um, it, when you go to do all your ties, it, if, it depends on if it's a multi-piece rod. Because I know you wanna, you wanna support that ferrule a little bit more too, so you wanna wrap that ferrule. Do your guide layouts, do your, you know, do your, um, oh my gosh, what is it called? You put line through it and you pull it down where you get it to bend, you want to make sure all your guides are correct. Oh, uh, static deflection. Thank you. Static yeah. deflection testing. Static you want to make testing, sure you yeah. do all that sort of stuff. Um, a lot of rod builders will tell you you, can, you need to spine it. Um, there's rod builders who tell you you don't need to spine it. I would say do what feels comfortable to you, but yeah, it's the, still a rod build. Yeah, um, the, the main difference I think he kind of uh, touched on, uh, the handles are super easy to glue up, really easy. Oh, that was the but, nicest thing yeah, in the entire world. Really nice uh, oh. when you put the real seat on. 
uh, the, but he said it, it for me it is a little bit more challenging uh, when you're doing the guy wrapping just because it is a, a smaller blank especially when you're doing smaller like four and five weights oh. uh, as compared to like an eight nine ten weight uh, so it, typically it is going to be a little bit more challenging but you know it's uh, it's the give and take you get a much easier uh, handle glue up yeah. you're done in a second and a half but you know it might take you a little bit longer on the guy it's like he said uh, give you a, just a very little space in between uh, your uprights when you're when you're, your uh, your stands when you're using it so you you are supporting that blank because it is a much thinner blank another and thing moderate another trick that I figured out on my own because I think I built my fly rod it was like the fourth rod I ever built mm -hmm. and I was getting really frustrated because I was on the other side of my power wrapper and I got all my supports over there but it was so many supports were on one side and on the other side it would kind of flex yeah well then I was like you're a dummy take it apart because it's a four piece. So I took it apart and I fashioned like a basically a, a jig mm -hmm. to where I could slide the tip into it and bring everything all the way back down and give me some support. But I also ended up like hand wrapping like the last two or three snake guides because it was just super easy. I could just roll it and, and, hand, and hand wrap it from there. Yeah. So play with it. It's, it's one of those things is there's a, a wonderful um, phrase that's used right here. Thread is cheap. So if you mess up, cut it off. Did Brad ever ask his question? I'm curious. I'm getting through it. We're still getting yeah. the comments that are like eight minutes ago. So, oh, Rindy, Dan, I've got on here. Rindy, plus three Celsius here and rain ice is going bye bye. Corey Lyman, no, not today. Negative nine here in the past few days. Kilometers is a rate of speed here. <laughs> uh, 32 for you is zero here. Negative 40 is negative 40 under any measurement. Mm. So, do you just skip 32 degrees? Because, like, if you're at zero, and that's our 32. If negative one Celsius, does that mean you're automatically at negative one Fahrenheit? I think that's four years. No, I'm just kidding. I thought it was 30 kilometers an hour. I don't know what's happening right now. Again, I'm an American. It's not an American. So uh, Brad Hensel um, says something about the 30s, uh, the microwave 30s. Microwave 30s. Uh, so like for the style of fishing that, uh, that I'm talking about, the 30s might be a little bit heavy. Um, for like for inshore fishing because most of the blanks that I'm talking about that I'm using for top water you're gonna see it's usually 6 to 12 8 to 15 8 to 14 and the microwave 30s are a little bit heavy for that I typically like to go with a single foot so I'll do the 20s or the 25 typically for the microwaves uh, Daniel W. O'Kane yeah Dan O'Kane Dan O'Kane hello guys mm -hmm. Daniel Daniel Ice Ice Kevin <laughs> oh we're not gonna bring that one up uh, Mike Hardeman, Austin, take Don to get to get some fried wings from there. Get him two dozen and send me the bill. No, Taco, we won't. Um, Corey Lyman, surf fishing, I do believe that is what it's used for. So he's talking about the 30s for surf, for surf fishing. Yeah, uh, you use them for surf fishing and then um, uh, heavier inshore fishing, like on my 7 foot 8, 12 to 20 for snook fishing. I'm using heavier line, 30 pound braid, 50 pound leader. You, it's a larger knot to pass through the guides. So having larger runners, uh, I like to uh, I like to fish the 30s on that, and as well as like uh, lighter surf rods. You know, I also just like the look of a microwave 50 on a rod. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's huge, but it's awesome. Yeah. Um, Steve Greathouse spooks question mark. Yeah, I, I, I think he uh, I think he was re asking. I think I answered got it. I answered that one. Oh, Austin, are you coming to ICRBE? Yep, I'll be there, Brad. I'll, I'll meet you in the elevator. <laughs> so for you, for you guys that don't know, uh, Don played a prank. Well, no, he didn't play a prank. He just had perfect timing uh, with Brad for an elevator <laughs> this last year. So it was it was a funny moment. <laughs> it, and this is the funny thing about this about ICRBE is. Even though it's a event, and we take it very seriously, when we get prepped for it, like we're, we're, we're prepping for it now, we're always kind of doing that sort of stuff. But what's really funny is it's all these little stories that you get. And, it, and if you are a customer of ours and, and that sort of stuff, you can definitely come in and, and see, and we'll talk, to, you know, if you have questions, come in and talk. But it's also the stuff that happens after the fact. Yeah. Oh, oh, he's bringing me something. Yeah. So here's a couple of different sizes. Some comparisons. So this is a this is a 18. I'm joking. This is the 50, which is why this is amazing. Um, we have, I believe, this is a 30. Yep, that's a 30. So you guys can see for sure. 
Oh, I don't know if these are gonna stand up. I'll hold this. Or one. You hold you hold the the big boy. And then mm. this is a what did you say it was? Twenty-five. 25? Yeah. So you can see like there's also we have other microwaves as well. Like there's still a ton. So if you have any questions about the microwaves in different sizes, definitely give us a call. Call Austin. He will be more than happy to answer your questions about this sort of stuff. Um, we have a bunch of information on our website. So if you have any questions about any of this, go ahead. One one thought you can say, uh, I mentioned the 25 and the 30, uh, that the 30 is quite a bit bigger. You see from this side, it doesn't look like it's that much bigger. The thing is, is it's a double foot and then on top of that, the transition guide for this set, the Microwave 30 set, is quite a lot bigger and heavier than this one is. So putting it on a eight to 14 rod, it, it's not unheard of, but it's just not that common. It's not something I like to do. We're just gonna so, leave this here because yeah. of just how awesome that is. I, it's one of the, just the coolest guides. So, um, Mike Hardiman, Kevin 11, don't you start. Don't you start with me. As you can tell, by the way, if, if you guys haven't joined our lives before, we get, we have a lot of fun on these. We Our customers are friends of ours. We, it, it gets kind of weird sometimes, but it's a lot of fun. A lot of inside jokes. Um, Steve Greathouse, I'll surprise you then. Uh, Brad Hatzel, Thanks, Steve. we have a case of chocolate coming here this year. Uh, Joe Miller, what's going on? Uh, Garrett Campbell, thanks for the info. I have an account and I have dealt with Captain Mo. Nice. Okay, yeah. awesome. Uh, Daniel O'Kane, recommendation for a two-piece fly blank 11 weight that one I uh, I wouldn't be able to help you out with as much we don't we don't have any 11 weights um, and just because I don't do as much fly fishing uh, I honestly I, I don't know if I could help you out with that as much I know uh, there's a ton of companies that make them uh, just one company that pops into my head although I don't know if they make an 11 weight but uh, I think it's CTS from uh, New Zealand sometimes they're at the show at uh, ICRBE, I know they make great blanks, uh, but again, uh, you know we don't really carry one, so I'm not sure. Uh, Randy, I moved up here 13 years ago. I'm getting used to the metric. Joe, Siri, what is nine degrees Celsius in Fahrenheit? LOL. Hmm. Corey, oh no, the Canon. He so he's he's talking about the microwave 30 for the Canon. Oh, gotcha, 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 gotcha. There we go. Okay. See, Corey, you're the man. Uh, Brad, woohoo. West Critzy, there will be a 50 set at the ICRBE, but Kevin won't be there to see it. Oh, oh, that's right. So Mary, if you guys don't, if you guys have never heard of Mary Christie, phenomenal rod builder. She runs the Southern Rod Builders page. Um, I, I think she. Great thread wraps. Oh yeah, very, she's very good phenomenal wraps. at wraps. She teaches a class. You yeah. can go take her courses. Go <clears> check her out. Wes is her husband. Um, I'm pretty sure he's talking about either Hulkbuster. Or the other one that has a 50 on it. So I will have to see. Hulkbuster's a really cool rod. She does these really cool theme rods that are absolutely stunning, but they still use them. It's pretty cool. Um, Brad, great news. Great family event. Negative nine is 41 for you. Oh. So 37 kilometers, I think. I'm using Two a months. 50 for the hood ornament of my Sonata. <laughs> Brad LaBelt. Austin is the best. Oh, Lee Belt. Lee Belt. We need the 25 or 30 and the double foot low profile hey, for casting that spinning. <clears throat> I was thinking a hood trunk. Hey, leave my microwave 50 alone, all right? They're not all trunk the freaking hood ornaments. Um, oh my gosh, Brad. Negative nine is 15. We have gone off the rails. <laughs> There's a lot of comments, though. We'll take it. At um, least we're having fun, right? That's still freezing dawn W <clears throat> this year. Um, I'll be there, Brad, and I have no clue what you're talking about, but I'm in. Oh, yeah, by the way, guys, you guys are going to meet John Graves. If you do go yeah. to ICRBE, he is coming to ICRBE. Unfortunately, um, I don't think Momo Chabot will be there, but at least John <sighs> Graves will be there. So I'm so sorry. Momo sad. Chabot is John Graves' awesome dog that's like our shop dog. So um, HFF has a 10-foot, 10 10-weight 10 matrix in blue. Hmm. Are they special order them up there? Uh, we it, do do special it, orders sometimes, possible. so... Uh, we used to do the green matrix, so if it's a blue matrix, I wonder if it's maybe something Don Schaefer painted, and they brought in been. a few. I'm not sure. It might have been. Yeah. By the way, HFF, um, awesome company to buy if you need to buy direct from somebody. They're located up north. Also, we'll be at the show next month. We'll also be at the show. <clears throat> um, and if you guys ever want to find out dealers, and we have a select group of dealers now that we're going to be uh, putting in a lot of things, if you get our emails, our new Rod Builders Bulletin, at the bottom of that, our select distributors are down there, and it's like HFF, Mudhole's on there, Island, Voodoo, a lot of those companies that we work really, really closely with. 
um, you can go on there and they can basically make a phone call. We'll send them out stuff directly. There's a ton of different things. So if you're always looking for American Tackle products and you don't have a business account set up with us, please check out those distributors. They're amazing. Um, oops, that's wrong. I was going the wrong way. Yes, yes, Corey, you went opposite because you're from Canada. Sorry. We had love to. you, Corey. Yeah, we do. I love that it keeps coming back to the temperature of everything, not like the rod building side, which well, is what we've got. Love. Several Canadians in the chat. So. <laughs> uh, let's see, uh, Daniel Kane. Thanks, Don Morris. I need some white wind grips or David similar. Walls? Yeah, David Walls. So uh, we're not going to have any wind grips. The the closest thing that we're going to have when when they are available is going to be the shrink ready grips. We don't have any in white yet, but I think it could definitely be something that we do have going forward, you know, because we're, we're obviously leaning heavy into the white with like our Sheroy collection of like the carbon fiber grips in white and some of the real seats in white. So I, uh, it, it won't be anything that, you know, is ready in tomorrow or six months per se, but it's something that we probably would have coming down the pipe. Yeah. So. The, the SRGs are, are, a lot of people talk about wind grips because it's a, it's a fiber based grip is wind, yeah. is wind grip. Um, one of the biggest reasons that the SRG was developed was to de to get away from fiber grips like the wind grip from yeah. deteriorating over time, and you couldn't do anything about that. You had to basically just rebuild rebuild it, or what a lot of anglers would do is they would just throw the rod away, or because they don't know how to build. I mean, yeah. I know we're talking to ninety nine yeah, percent builders, but you know, anglers would be getting rid of these rods. Well, now this gives those anglers uh, and even rod builders a really easy way to to repair rods really really quickly. Um, change up colors, change up designs, and, and do a lot of that stuff. So yeah, there's definitely a lot of stuff coming from that. So stay on the lookout for that. As soon as that goes live, trust me, we will let you know. Um, Mary says she's not going since y'all are bailing out. Okay, first off, nobody's bailing. I have to go somewhere else. Austin's still going to be there. The man, the myth, the legend, Don Morris will be there. And Mr. John Graves will be there. So Mary, I'm so sorry. Don't hate me. Um... Oh, Don, it's an HFF exclusive. Oh, okay. Cool. They have cool. matching seats as well. That's so awesome. if you need that uh, flywood, yeah. yeah, hit up HFF. That's awesome. Um, did John call his dog Momo because he's secretly in love with Captain Mo? Actually, yes. Uh, it's, it's, not it's, it's, it's not a secret. I, I, Patrick definitely hit that. It's, it's actually the, the dog's name it's is Momo Chabot, um, which is the, the true full name of that dog. And John's in the chat, so he will definitely comment it's not a, it's not a secret it's just not i think he said you know yep he did <laughs> see great house you know um brad we love our canadian brothers we do that absolutely we do. uh that west we christie do. carbon is better than wind i agree i i'm sorry i agree now don't get me wrong wind wind grips are very cool grips yeah. they are very odd they're very nice they're very comfortable <laughs> nothing against them there's a billion of them sold a year or something like yeah that, I, so you can't be mad they gotta, at that. Be, they gotta be nice i think we've got we had 113 comments. No wonder it took us forever to get through it. That's so. Hey, wow. hey, we'll take it. The show has we'll gone on it. for an hour. Keep the comments coming on future video, guys. We we definitely appreciate it. We've been rocking this for an hour. I think this is. And why this is time, it with you? It's the longest saying, show. And this time it wasn't because I just you know hopped up on my soapbox and I ran no, off. No, no. I, I I purposely left it off <laughs> where it was like we're not talking about. <laughs> any of this stuff i'm going to keep this show tight but you guys blew up the comments no, which is awesome that's awesome we appreciate it guys for real so i think that kind of covers everything um guys uh thank you so very much um we've seen a huge amount of growth in our social media platforms on our youtube channel on our emails that we're sending out um if you want to get more information as a rod builder we have a new email that's going out once every two weeks it's called the at rod builders bulletin it has everything from videos to news to um, product highlights, uh, quick tips. There's a ton of stuff in there specifically about rod building. We also put news from around the industry in there. So if you mm -hmm. want to kind of stay up to date on that, we don't blow you guys up. If you want to uh, sign up for that, um, I will post a link in the comment section with a direct link to sign up for that. Or you can go onto our website and that pop out will pop out or go to the bottom and sign up for the newsletter. Definitely um, sign up for it. We don't, it's, it's pretty cool. Yeah, we don't we don't spam people, and anybody on here that gets our emails knows that we we don't like send an email out every day yeah. or every two days. It's usually we're gonna send you an email when we have something to say. Yeah. Uh, so, which by the way, if you're on our email list, you're gonna get an email about how we won another award for the SRGs. So stay tuned to that. Um, but I think let's see, 
Uh, oh, we got we got more comments. Thanks, guys. I got to keep going. Um, Don one seventeen. Uh, that mainly sold because of QC. Can't wait to see you guys. That's great to hear. Gave me an hour break from rebuilding a loader bucket. Oh, oh no. And I think I learned something. Nice, Steve. We're always glad to hear that. Wes, congrats on the win. Randy, yes, congrats on the yesterday. Thanks, guys. So I think with that, guys, we're going to wrap it up. As always, uh, Austin, thank you so much for joining me and having the longest show on Human. And, um, and the second one. And he's got, he's got yeah, he, he, you, you don't like to lose, ever. So real quick, how do they get a hold of you? Uh, you can uh, get me at Austin at American ta- Austin at American Tackle US, or you can call the uh, the regular line four zero seven seven zero six zero three two one, and then my uh, direct extension is one two zero six. So again, guys, thank you so much. If you have any questions, you can shoot Austin an email, or you can reach out to us directly on our regular one eight hundred number, or our four zero seven number, or hit us up on social media. So with that, I think we're going to wrap it up. So as always, guys, thank you so much for tuning in, and we'll see you next time. Thanks, guys.